I like easy games. I'm a casual gamer and I don't want to spend an hour trying a hard boss fight again and again. But why be uncomfortable if you don't have to? I am already stressed. I need a game to relax me and not to stress me out even more. This is the most stressed out I've ever been in my life. Therefore, it never occurred to me that I would ever try out any of these Soulsborne games. However, I bought a PlayStation 5 and the only PlayStation 5s that were available were stupid overpriced bundles with games that no one wants. So I got a PS5 bundled with Demon's Souls. What was I supposed to do? I know, just sell it on eBay and use the money to buy one of the other two available PS5 games. But selling Demon's Souls wasn't a good plan, since everyone who wanted to buy a PS5 this year was forced to buy one of those stupid bundles. So in contrary to the console itself, the supply of these games that usually come with a console is much higher than the demand and there are a lot of those online for sale across different marketplaces. Therefore I'd probably be selling the game with a decent loss. So I decided to keep it and put it on my shelf next to all the other games I haven't played. That's a lot by the way, but how could I call myself a backlog gamer if I didn't have piles of games that are still untouched like the Virgin Mary herself. So I knew that Demon's Souls is in good company. But something was different this time. This game haunted me. And I mean that literally. I woke up in the morning and the game was sitting on my nightstand. I came out of the shower, guess who's waiting for me? I know what you think. That's impossible and you are right, I don't believe in ghosts either. So it was probably just my girlfriend messing with me by placing the game in all those different spots in our apartment whenever I wasn't paying attention. I can't But there was still a 1% chance that the game was cursed and I had to play it to break the curse. So I did. At the beginning I have to choose a starting class and I immediately remember why I hate RPGs. Because I'm constantly overwhelmed by decisions I have to make. Let's see, since I'm a wizard myself, I'd say we try it with the magician. And there we go. After a surprisingly easy tutorial level and an unbeatable tutorial boss, I am traveling to Boletaria, where the <laughs> demon soul starts. What the hell is going on here? And... I make it like 10 steps far before dying to the most generic level 1 opponent. That's like dying to the first Goomba in Super Mario. <sighs> Let's try this again. Knowing some basics can make the difference between the next 35 hours being an enjoyable ride or pure hell. So go ahead and call me a little... Whatever, who watches beginner guides before starting Demon Souls. I don't mind, I wanna finish this game and I know literally nothing at all about Souls likes or RPGs for that matter, so giving me a little head start is excusable I think. I had to check twice if these beginner guides were in English because to me this sounded like someone is trying to explain the theory of relativity in an ancient language. Now all I need is a beginner's guide explaining what the heck these YouTubers are talking about in their beginner guides. Anyway, after watching some of these tutorials I am not really sure what the difference between magician and royalty is. But they recommend starting with royalty, so I do that and jump in there again before my head explodes from all this gibberish. The first level is not the hardest one in the game, but it is the hardest one in the game. This makes no sense. I don't really know how to explain, but it just took me some time to get into the flow of the game, which is why this first level can be really brutal, especially if you never played a game like this before. 
So, after an hour and dying about 300 times, I'm like... Please. Please kill me. But after another hour and beating my first boss, I'm like... So maybe I'm not such a loser after all. So I keep going and after a few more hours, I'm like... No problem. What was Gandalf doing fighting this clown for hours when I only needed 3 attempts? I guess I'm just a way better wizard than Gandalf. But wait Smog? That's easy, you just have to hit him with a huge arrow once, right? Oh, you actually need to hit him twice. That's okay, I can do that. Oh, damn it. All right, let's try again. Why don't you just Fucking die already. So, what's the big deal with this game? It's not hard. Oh, come on! You look terrible. Cheer up! Life is an adventure. <laughs> Fuck you. Surprisingly, I have a lot of fun with the game. But then, something strange happens. I look up the time and it seems as I've been playing for 5 hours without even realizing. It may not sound like much to you, but that's not something I ever do. Usually I need a break after an hour or two and even if I end up playing a longer session, which really only happens in open world games where I'm just roaming around, I'm usually aware of the time, multiple hours just passing by without me even realizing because I'm so deep into a game is very unusual for me. But every evening after telling my girlfriend that I'm gonna go play that demons game for an hour. I end up staying in front of our bedroom door a few hours later trying to explain what happened. I, I got uh, stuck somewhere and I lost track of time. And I'm sorry. The next 30 hours I roller coaster ride mixing fear and anxiety with pure motivation and following up frustration with deep satisfaction. This is the emotional loop that keeps me playing. When the game is frustrating, you know that it isn't gonna be like that forever. You know there is gonna be a point when you feel pure joy again. There is one big misconception I had about this game and others that are alike. It's that hardcore gamers like it because it is hard and punishing. Oh, it's painful, so I love it. Thank you. Oh, such pleasure. I didn't mean to cause you any pleasure, which causes me pain, which gives me pleasure. But people don't like this game because it is hard. They like it because it is a really good game. To be fair, it wouldn't be as good if it was much easier, because the game isn't about big cinematic cutscenes and in-depth characters. It's all about the gameplay and mastering the challenge. So in the same way that it wouldn't make sense to make a metroidvania too easy because then there is no point about learning and combining new abilities, there would be no point to a game like Demon Souls if you weren't forced to figure out ways to get through the game because it's already super easy to begin with.
The way that Demon Souls deals with its challenging nature is unique in my experience. I don't like dying in games. It takes me out of the gameplay flow and breaks the immersion. It shows me that I'm not the super soldier BJ Blazkowicz, but just someone who got shot in a first person shooter. I'm not the funny, witty and brave Nathan Drake who can climb anything. I'm just an idiot who was too slow at pressing a button. Dying in a game means failing. You're not supposed to die, you're supposed to kill enemies, traverse terrain and progress the story. Here however, dying can be seen as part of the game. I'm trapped in the nexus, that's why I'm coming back in soul form. That makes sense, it is congruent with the lore and doesn't break the immersion. In terms of gameplay, you can die and still progress because you got certain items or you open the shortcut and the next attempt to beat the level might be much faster. This game was trapping me in a motivating and satisfying gameplay loop that is unmatched in my own history of gaming. And so I traveled from the deepest tunnels and darkest prisons to the highest towers, from stormy ruins to the filthiest swamps, killing demons and other monstrosities. And the journey shall end where it all began. While I'm traveling back to the castle, I start singing Carry On Wayward Son, like you usually do when you recap all the demon killing that happened in the past few hours. Once I rose above the noise and confusion Just to get a glimpse beyond this illusion I was soaring ever higher But I flew too high There are things I have been missing, I know that. Loot I didn't pick up, NPCs that I couldn't rescue, probably some hidden doors that I didn't find. There is still so much lore to explore, weapons and items to try out and spells to learn. I fear I'm missing out on something. But it doesn't matter, I have to finish the game. And so I do. I fight the last battles and get to the end credits. What an experience that was. Never have I felt such an urge to get into new game plus. I never do that. I don't have that much time for games and when I finish a game, I wanna start a new one. Especially when it's a game that took me almost 40 hours to complete. But there is something about this game that doesn't wanna let me go yet. Because I really like my time with it. From the variety of levels to the enemies and boss fights, from the freedom in playstyles to the soundtrack and the graphics and the heavy feeling controls and above all the dark and mysterious world that still leaves so much unexplained, this game was pure enjoyment.